What is going on, everyone? Today is the day. Today's the day I drop my biggest tutorial yet. And it's all about DaVinci Resolve and editing videos for real estate clients. I'm going to show you how I got off that Adobe subscription model from Premiere Pro and After Effects, paid my one time fee to DaVinci Resolve, and now I save myself $600 a year. I'm going to show you how I take my basic raw vlog footage that looks like this and I'm gonna turn it into a deliverable product that looks like this. Along the way, I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to stay organized in your processing, and I'll show you two different ways, a down, dirty, nitty gritty way to get the job done super quick, and of course, the proper way you should do it if you have the time. Let's go. All right, everybody, as I just said, we're going into DaVinci Resolve, which means the majority of this video is going to be screen capture footage. So just keep that in mind. I'll try and keep everything timeline down in the bottom so you can skip to the parts that you need to know and you don't necessarily have to watch the parts you already know. But for those of you new to DaVinci Resolve, I'll show you how to start from scratch for the whole process. But the very first thing I actually want to do is jump into my main folder in DaVinci Resolve and kind of show you how I have everything set up so that way I am successful in the future and I can easily replicate all these videos. It's one thing to create one of these videos from scratch. It's another thing totally to be able to replicate them time and time again. So I'm going to show you right now how I kind of go about doing that. So flip on over to the screen. I guess we can't do both screens. So I'm going to have to edit this off of a single screen. Give me just a moment and I'll switch that over. Boom. Okay. I just switched it over. Now, if you need to know how to do this in the future, you can turn off your dual color workspace by going up to workspace. There's dual screen right here. It's a simple on and off click button. So click it on if you want both screens. I'm gonna click it off since I am screen capturing for you and everything's under one panel now. This may take me a little bit longer than usual since I'm more used to working off of split screen, but it'll be way easier for you to follow along this way. So as I said before, Let's jump right in. So as you can see, right down here is where all of my important information is. I create bins along the way. All of these bins hold all of my files from the house that I shot that day. Everything is in vlog, so you can go through. I only keep three bins at a time just to try and keep the system from lagging out too much. I have another bin that has just my timelines for each song that I use. I have one that has all of my agent logos and one that has all the audio that I use. This is a brand new one that I'm just kind of setting up. I used to keep all of these in separate folders, which I'll show you right now. You can go up here to project manager and you can see all the songs that I use right here. I used to have all separated up into individual files. Now I'm trying to combine them all into just one project because I think it'll be way easier to keep track of. If there's one thing I can say that I do differently than most other real estate videographers is that if you go to my website, you'll actually see that I let agents choose their songs. I have 12 songs that I use regularly. I change them up once a year or something like that, except for the very most popular ones. But I let agents choose. This number one gets them kind of involved in the creation process. So it gives them a little bit more emotional attachment to the videos that I create, which allows them to like it more and hire me more because they feel like they were a part of the process. Number two, it allows me to not have to hunt for audio all the time. If you're anything like me, then the audio selection almost matters the most. The songs that go behind what we're creating matters a whole lot. And I put a whole lot of time into finding good ones. So I take those good ones that I like and I allow agents to choose from those. Once they choose, I go into this product. This also allows me to keep all of my projects time lined up and keeps all of the audio with keyframes built into them. So I know exactly where the video track should go, making the process super, super easy along the way. Now I know there are some features that allow you to kind of sync up video with audio. I've never personally had any good luck in making that replicatable, duplicatable, and repeatable throughout my process. This is the only way I've ever found that allows me to go through everything and keep it the same every single time. So now that I've showed you just kind of this basic thing, I am now going to start from very scratch. Let's jump back into the computer. I'm going to go up here to file. I'm going to go to new project just to start from scratch, right? Create. 
I don't really care what it's called because this is just for learning purposes. Now what I'm going to do is pull up some actual video footage and I'm just gonna pull some up from a house that I shot the other day. And I'm not gonna pull everything in because that would take way too long, but I'm gonna pull in just a few clips in order to kind of go through the process, maybe an aerial and a few interiors and a few exteriors, just so you can see. All right, so what I did is I went ahead here and loaded up a bunch of files and I'm gonna show you how I organize these to begin with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is right click over here and go to this new bin option. New bin, it's automatically labeled bin one. Uh, I like to go with the double digit number so that way by the end of the year, I can kind of guesstimate roughly how many real estate videos I've done throughout the year. So we'll start this with 001 and I will throw all of the footage into here. This way, everything for this house is in one organized place. And whenever I get past a certain amount, I can just remove this from the folder and I won't have to worry about removing any crucial data from my timeline. Now, that being said, I will create a, another bin, new bin, and this one I will name timelines. One more new bin. And this one I will name audio. Now, these are the main ones you're gonna need. I'm gonna go ahead and drag in a few audio clips real quick. Let's just pick one of the random songs. Boom, put this one on in here. And there we go. Now we have everything that we're gonna need to kind of get started in DaVinci Resolve. I've already got everything in their proper bins, so everything stays organized along the way. Now let's get into the timeline building process. All you basically have to do is come on over to the Edit tab and drag anything into your timeline. So I'm gonna drag the audio first because that's what I kind of base everything off of. I'm gonna drag this down a little bit so you can see everything. Boom, you can hear it play nice and pretty. Let's turn the volume down just in case. There we go. Now, here we go, we have our audio in here. The very first thing I like to do with my audio is go ahead and go through the song and clip out all the beats. Now, in order to do this, all you really need to know is the keyframe hotkey and that is the letter M for mark. So I let it play, and every time I hear a beat break, press the M button. And as you can see, a little tab pops up. And if you want to get super technical, like I always do, hold down the Alt button and use your scroll wheel and you can zoom into your project. This is when you can grab these little guys and move them around and you can put them directly over the brakes because a lot of times you can see the brakes. Like look, right here's one, you can tell that's one. You can tell this is actually off a little bit. So we'll bring that one forward. This one's off a little bit. There we go. Now we have our main brakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of mark a few more and then we'll jump back in. All right, I do wanna give you one important tip while doing this. I always make sure to mark the audio track and not the project timeline. And I'll tell you why. Whenever you mark the audio track, the tracks for the audio will move when you move the audio track. If you put your marks up here on the actual timeline, so if this is not selected and you just start marking, then you'll notice they go here when you move the audio, that's not correct. When you move the audio, those stay in its place. And basically what that means is if you ever have to nudge the audio one way or the other, like let's say you want to add an intro to the beginning with a nice title screen, then you're, all of those marks you just spent all your time making are gonna be null and void and you're gonna have to remark everything. So in order to make sure that doesn't happen, just really make sure you have the audio clip selected when you start your marking process. This will help you a whole lot. Trust me, don't do what I did. Don't mark the timeline, mark the audio. This will also allow you to drag and drop this audio onto other projects and keep all those keyframes in place, which is super useful in the future. So like I said, just remember, mark the audio track and not the timeline itself. All right, so now that we have this thing marked up a few times, if you see this button right up here, the ruler, the full extent zoom, you press this and it will zoom out to 
the full extent of your video timeline. So it will show you every clip on the timeline. If you have a short one, it'll be nice and short. If you have a long one, it'll be nice and long. It's whatever the size of the clips you have up there are. So just keep that in mind, but it is a useful tool in the fly to kind of go back to just regular view of your entire timeline. Now that we've done the basic thing of marking the audio maps, let's go into actual video footage since I'm sure that's what you're all really here for. Here we go. I'm gonna go right over here to our folder. Let's just grab some random drone footage. Here we go. Let's see. Now I use the hotkeys for just about everything. N is I and O is out. So to mark it in, press I. To mark an out point, press O. So that's what I'll do here. I marks the end point. I'll drag this on over to here somewhere, I guess. Press O, that'll be the out point, and I'll drag it on down to my timeline. Another thing to keep in mind about DaVinci Resolve is that whenever you zoom in and zoom out, you'll notice your little red timeline marker right there that you drag around. Wherever that is, is where you'll zoom in. So I'm used to wherever the mouse is, it will zoom in from things like Photoshop, but it is wherever your playhead is that it will zoom in and out of. So make sure when you're zooming in and out, you put your playhead where you wanna to zoom to. Back to the front, zoom in. I'm gonna take this clip and just stretch it on out. Oh, you know what? This clip is actually, I don't even think it's moving. Oh, yep, that explains everything. Let's try a different clip, huh? How about this one? Does it actually move? Here we go. And boom. Bring that on down, stretch it on out. And now we have our very first clip. Press spacebar to let it play. Oh, see, I can already see that this mark is off, so we'll move it to where it's supposed to be. Mark it up. Boom. Drop. Look at that, right on key. Now we'll go to just another footage. We'll do another exterior clip. How about this? Okay, here we go, I'll show you a prime example. Now, this is a drone shot that I do all the time where I start at the front door and back up because I find it easier than flying towards the front door a lot of times. So that's exactly what I've done here and I'll show you how to deal with that DaVinci Resolve. So go to where you want just as before, end point, we'll come on out here somewhere. This will be the out point. Drag this on down to your timeline as before. Oh, that's a lot, there we go. Now, right click and you're gonna go right here to change clip speed. Whenever you go to change clip speed, right here, we're gonna go to negative 100. That's a super easy way. You can also click right here where it says reverse speed. It'll do this whenever you click the reverse speed button. It will just put negative 100 into this actuator or whatever this little box is called. Change, now it's automatically reversed. Now let's see what we're doing now. Press the space bar, hits right on time, hits right on time again. All right, so we got those going. Let's grab uh, one more. Actually, you know, we're done with exterior clips. It doesn't really matter because I'm not matching the song up. I'm just showing you the process. Let's go to an interior clip. Here we go. Now, anybody who watches my videos knows well, let's go to a part that's usable because I remember this house in particular. Now, in, out. Now you'll notice whenever I have the footage from my actual GH5S instead of my DJI drone, there are now two options at the bottom of the screen. This allows me to drag, if I just drag the screen, it will drag the audio and the video components that I have. If I grab this little button on the left, the screen grab, it will bring just the visual components, which is what I use all the time. And if you grab the other one, the audio, it will grab just the audio components, which I basically never ever use, obviously. Let's continue. Now we've got this one dragged onto here. Let's bring it down, here we go, and as you all know, I talk about it in a lot of my videos, I'm a big proponent of sliders and I use the Edelkrone Slider 1 Pro V2. I'm pretty sure that's the nomenclature, but 
The only negative thing I have with it is that it's kind of slow. So I actually speed my footage up. Most real estate videographers use a gimbal and they shoot at 60 frames a second and they slow that footage down. I take a different approach. I shoot at 24 frames a second and I speed everything up when needed. A lot of people don't do that because they have issues with ceiling fans. I've come to my own terms on how to deal with ceiling fans and it's that basically I never turn them on. I just lightly touch them and turn them on and I'll show you why, so let's jump right in. Here we go, let's press play on this speed. See, you can see how slow it is. This is normal speed actually. I just barely tap the ceiling fan up in the corner and I am slowly pushing the door open right there. That's why, but I do it so slow because in post-production, I always go change clip speed and I put my clips to 200% because that's what I think is perfect to match this whole scenario that I'm going after. So let's see, look how butter smooth that is. Oh, look, here we go. We missed that mark too. Go back a little bit, move the mark to where it's supposed to be. And here we go. Now, the best thing about continually moving these marks into the correct place is that as you save this project, you'll never have to do this again. Once they're all in the correct place the very first time, you'll be able to drag and drop clips like it's nobody's business. Let's continue on. Let's throw one more clip in here. Let's just pick a bedroom clip, I guess, because that's what I have right here. And in, out, grab just the screen because I don't want the audio, dragging it in. We'll drag it to a double clip because even though I mark every beat break, that doesn't mean I put a change of clip on every beat break. Sometimes I space it out so the it, it stays visually appealing. Just like when I'm making these YouTube videos, I may just randomly jump in a little bit closer. That's to make it more visually appealing. And we're going with this too. Some rooms you really want to hold their attention on. So instead of pushing through them fast, you give them a little bit more of a break. And that's what I'm going for right here. Now, just like before, I know I've got to change my clip speed because I always do. And here we go. Let's see where we're at now. We got that, that, boom, beautiful entrance shot. Nice little beautiful slow roll into the master suite right on the beat drop again. It's that simple. I'm always putting it right on the beat drop. Now, I think you kind of get the point of what's going on here. So I can go on to the next subject matter, which is really how I actually edit these, other than just laying them down in a timeline. How am I editing the footage? Because that's the most crucial part. So if you're just jumping in now on the timeline, we're gonna get into editing these actual clips. I'm gonna do the nitty gritty way first, and then I'll come back and do the actual way that I edit things now, instead of the way that I learned to begin with, which I wish I never would have, because it just kind of slowed down my ability to use this program properly. But we'll go back in and let's pick this clip in particular. Now let's pretend we have our whole timeline laid out. We've got everything done that we wanna do. Now it's time to start editing, right? Now we go to the color tab. This is where you do all of your color adjustments. The edit tab is where you do all of your laying out, all of your titles, everything like that. Now, when it comes down to color adjustments, color grading, this is where it's all done. And this is, in my opinion, where I think DaVinci Resolve is superior than Premiere Pro and the whole reason I switched in the beginning. It was nice to save that extra like 600 and something bucks a month from getting out of that Adobe subscription, but the color science here is what really convinced me to change. So the very first thing we're gonna do is nitty gritty editing. We're not gonna start with these because you know, these are like, these are exterior drone images. They're pretty good to begin with. You know, I could go into a deep dive with these, but they're super simple. Let's go into something a little more difficult like interiors. Here you go. So the way I was taught the nitty gritty way of doing this is to just simply come down here to your curves. You're going to take your black point, pull it all the way in. You're going to take your white point and pull it all the way in to the first bump right there. So. If you come over here, click on this scopes button, this is the most important thing you can be looking at the whole time. This shows you what you're going for. Now, you can do it like this, always drag down the center a little bit, bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights, 
that's very basic. Then you can come over here, increase gamma, bring down this. And this is called crushing the blacks, the way you want your blacks to be under a certain threshold so they're not super grainy looking in your edit. It's not super important you do this. This is once again a nitty gritty easy way of getting it done. So you can tell I've already taken my vlog footage from this to this. I still got to increase the saturation, usually about 60, 65 is what I think looks good for an interior, trying to get rid of a lot of these yellows. That's a big problem that you have with interiors. And the very last thing I do is grab my little dropper, find a place on the ceiling that's like in between the yellow and the white, and that will do a lot of your adjustment process. There. That's it. That's the nitty gritty way of doing this. That is the very simplest way you can do this. And if you do just this, believe it or not, you don't even have to buy DaVinci Resolve. This part right here, you can use for complete free, no issues, no worries, no nothing. Just download the program and use it. You can, it's only 295 bucks for the whole program that allows you to use everything. But if you don't have that money yet, feel free to just use this nitty gritty way of editing. But I will tell you, it has a few downfalls. It does kind of destroy your dynamic range a little bit. Um, it, it does a few nasty things to the overall image. And this is just me being super particular about my final product. If you're not super, super particular about it, if you're trying to get it done and knowing that this is just an MLS video, then this is perfectly acceptable. I used this way of editing for about half a year before I learned the new way of editing, which I'll go to a little bit later, but let's keep on this nitty gritty path so I can show you the few extra steps I go through in the process. Now you've got all this done, right? You've got your basic editing done and we can all agree that it looks way better than it started, right? One thing you're gonna wanna do, pump up your saturation or your contrast a little bit also. I usually bring it up to 1.1 roughly. I think that's a really good, setting for my camera personally, the GH5S. When using vlog footage, every footage is different. You all have to make that decision, but that's what I personally like. Now, what I do like about DaVinci Resolve is that even though, unlike Premiere Pro, where you have layers, these are all in nodes, so every clip is separate, but there is an easy way to deal with that. We can take this right here and we can steal the grade from the one right before it by simply clicking down on your mouse button while hovering over it. So you select the one you want, go to this one, boom, you've instantly stole that grade. Now the problem with this is that since we're doing the nitty gritty way, these grades don't always match up. So you're gonna have to come in here and adjust this a little bit. I usually end up resetting this, come on over here, we can do it again because it is nitty gritty. So it's not very difficult to do. And just like that, we have pretty much fixed it. Two edits or two clips and what was that? Like eight minutes while I explain it to you. As you can see, this gets very, very easy along the way. This is the very easiest nitty grittiest way to do this. Once you have everything done the way you like it, you simply go to the deliver tab and from this deliver tab is where you export your footage. Now that was a very quick rundown of the nitty gritty way of editing these clips to keep them uh, good looking or that is basically the nitty grittiest way to edit these things for a deliverable product for clients. All right, that's it everybody. That's as far as we're getting into this video because I'm sure it's already ridiculously long. I will be making more DaVinci Resolve tutorials specifically for real estates. I will be talking about drone footage. We just went over the basic way. I will probably make another video where I talk just specifically in a very detailed process about the proper way of grading these and keeping everything organized. And maybe I'll do it in a less sporadic and clustered way uh, like I just did now. I kind of just sat down in front of the computer and decided, you know what? I think the people want to know this information because I can't find this information. So that's it. That's my whole video. If you like the information I provide and the way I provided it, you know, press that like button, mash, subscribe, all that jazz. If not, well then I guess I won't see you next time, but hopefully I do.